Well, here we go again, the 3D movie of deception, deflection, and distraction. Uh, this is no management style that I've ever been exposed to. If President Trump thinks that the American public's not being well served by his attorney general, he alone has the authority to dismiss him, and I don't know why he doesn't do that outright, except for the fact that he would be doing it over a matter, a matter in which Attorney General Sessions actually took an action, namely recusing himself from the Russian investigation as a matter of ethical principle. And so I know, I think on some level he knows that wouldn't go over very well with the American public. So instead he's engaged in this evidently effort to kind of force him out, embarrass him out, shame him out, who knows what. Congressman, if Sessions goes, whether he is uh, shamed out, as you put it, or whether uh, the president directly fires him, does it concern you about what happens then next, potentially, to the special counsel, Bob Mueller? Absolutely, Poppy. In fact, I, I think we're already heading pell-mell toward a constitutional crisis uh, over this entire matter. If he, in fact, is using this as a grace note or a grace step in order to discharge uh, Director Mueller, uh, there's no doubt in my mind that uh, Congress will react swiftly, strongly, immediately, and there's no doubt in my mind that this will uh, constitute a constitutional crisis. Why do you think Congress will act, you know, swiftly, as you put it? Congress didn't act particularly swiftly when the president fired James Comey. Mm -mm. No, they didn't at all, John, and that's a really good point. But I think especially on today, which is essentially, in the broader context, kind of a good news day. Look, we're having Mr. Kushner in to the uh, House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence. We're taking that step forward. And when you actually think about how much more we know today than we did six months ago, we have made slow but steady progress. And when you think about the fact that the House today on the suspension calendar is going to overwhelmingly uh, enact the increased sanctions on Russia, we're making progress. Uh -huh. Congress will respond eventually. Not as quickly as the American public would like, I think, not as quickly as I would like. But we will do it, we are doing it, and we will continue to do it. And we will do it in this instance. So as you heard, Jared Kushner in the Rose Garden yesterday said, I did not collude, nor did anyone else on the campaign with any foreign government. You said to our colleague Kate Baldwin earlier this month, quote, we are far past collusion. Both can't be right. Make the case. So I would ask Mr. Kushner how it is he can even look the American public in the eye and maintain that there has been no collusion when he met with a Russian government lawyer. He met with a Russian money launderer. He met with the CEO of a Russian bank that was under sanction. The CEO, by the way, uh, having been a graduate of, in effect, their KGB school. And that and he, in fact, had not one, not two, not three, but four meetings with Russian officials during the course of last year in the transition. Failed, according to open sources, to acknowledge that in his first standard form 86, his security application. But his Congressman, second any one, good any good let, attorney Poppy, would tell you that, that that meetings, as many as there are, and as, as questionable as they may be, do not collusion make without the evidence. Have you seen something? So why did he leave him off his standard form 86, Poppy? This is not, he's not golfing on one of his father-in-law courses where he gets a mulligan in every hole. Look, uh, naivete is an excuse, it's not a defense. Incompetence is an excuse, it's not a defense. He met with the people on the issue, presumably of adoption, which is inextricably linked to the issue of lifting sanctions on Russia. But naivete you, is not an uh, excuse. I understand the argument you're making, but he, in his 11-page written statement, mm -hmm. lays out point by point an explanation from his view of each and every one of these meetings. The explanation for that meeting uh, with Don Jr. and the Russian lawyer was that he never read the full list of the emails and he left because the meeting was so boring. He seems to indicate he wasn't part of any collusion about information regarding Hillary Clinton. And then the other meetings he has explanations for too. I understand that you don't buy those explanations, but have you seen direct evidence that he John, did anything that was improper? Go ahead. John, this is not a question of me not buying his latest explanation. This is a question of his explanation keeps changing. His story, his brother-in-law's story, his father-in-law's story changes at every turn. First there were no meetings, and then there were. And then there was no discussion of issues relating to the sanctions, and then there were. His story changes more often than the Republican health care bill, and it keeps getting worse just like that bill. Covered a lot of ground, Congressman Denny Heck. We know you will be questioning Jared Kushner very shortly. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. Thank, thank you, John.